the year 2011 continues to rewrite the record books in the Northeast from precipitation. I'm Senior Meteorologist Jonathan Wood from the Weather Channel. I'm going to take you through some of the incredible rain and even snow statistics that have piled up to make this an incredible year for flooding and heavy rain in the Northeast. Let's start out with our rainfall map. This is rainfall for the year to date. Uh, what you see here are the hotter colors showing the heavier rainfall, the lighter green colors showing the light rainfall. So immediately you come to the drought area in Texas and Oklahoma, very, very light rainfall here, of course. But then there's a quarter from the Missouri Ozarks all the way through the Ohio Valley and then into the northeast, especially parts of Pennsylvania, New Jersey, upstate New York, Connecticut, Massachusetts, and Vermont that have just been hammered by repeated heavy rainfall so far this year. So let's just take a look at the first eight months of 2011. And this, here, the uh, NOAA's National Climatic Data Center uh, basically takes a composite and average all the rain uh, by state. And what you see here is the there are five states, uh, Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Ohio, that had their wettest January through August period on record. These records from NOAA and the National Climatic Data Center go back to 1895, so pretty amazing stuff. And there are also surrounding states. Uh, Vermont had their second wettest. Uh, New Hampshire had a top five wettest. Massachusetts was also in their top ten wettest. So it's clearly the January through August period was already wet. Then we had the remnants from what was Tropical Storm Lee spread heavy rainfall from Louisiana, Mississippi, Gulf Coast, all the way up into the interior northeast. In fact, you see some of those incredible rainfall totals from the event. Over 15 inches of rain in Elizabethtown, PA. Colonial Beach, Virginia had almost 21 inches of rain, and that produced record flooding in at least 11 locations in Pennsylvania and New York, including the Susquehanna Valley around Binghamton. But then in August, it was interesting, we of course had Hurricane and then Tropical Storm Irene to worry about. But actually before that, two weeks ago, um, in mid-August on a weekend, we had a heavy rain event that targeted uh, northern New Jersey and Long Island, southern Connecticut with heavy rain. So that, that was also another event that added up to a record wettest month all time in places like New York City, Philadelphia, and Allentown, PA. In fact, this was, Irene was called the costliest disaster in New Jersey history per state of local emergency management with at least $67 million worth of damage estimated at this early stage. There were record river, cre river crests in at least 19 locations. Uh, in fact, there was a, a Vermont public radio report that cited that every major road in the state of Vermont had at least some flood damage from Irene. Severe weather expert Dr. Greg Forbes said there were 16 trillion gallons of rain dumped in the United States from Irene. So let's look at some city notables. I mean, these are some incredible statistics pointed out. Let's start out with New York City. Um, New York City's precipitation surplus, we look at year to date, is almost 20 inches above the average. Now, when you consider that typically average precipitation on a monthly basis in New York City is only about three inches or so, to be 20 inches above average is just amazing. In fact, we go back to the winter season. It's not just been heavy rainfall, but heavy snow. Uh, New York City Central Park had over three feet more than their average snow last season. And that includes, in records dating back to 1869, they had two of the seven 20-inch snowstorms of record in the same season. So that all added up to the incredible amounts of, of water in the ground once all that snow melted. Of course, it's not just New York City store. Burlington, Vermont had a record flood. Uh, it was record flooding on Lake Champlain in the spring. They had a record wet spring from March to May. And they've had over 10 feet of snow last season, which is three and a half feet above average. So, again, just an incredible snow season. Prime the pump once that snow melted. And then we had significant spring rain that produced the significant flooding on Lake Champlain. A couple of other cities to highlight. Binghamton, New York, has already set its record wettest calendar year on record. Now, they did that in early September. They did that with just under four months left to go in the year. So they did that but with the help of the remnant of Tropical Storm Lee dumping in almost seven and a half inches of rain in just one day, making that Binghamton's wettest calendar day on record. Oh, by the way, during the winter season, they had almost 10 feet of snow in one season. Now that's a good, that's almost three feet above their average for a certain year. 
Then we go to Hartford, Connecticut, not to be left out. Hartford's had almost 50 inches of rain and melted snow just in 2011 alone. That's over 17 inches wetter than their average. And what we remember Hartford for the most was they had their heaviest snowstorm of record on one day, January 12th, they picked up two feet of snow. And that event helped, combining with some other events, led to their snowiest month on record in January with 54 inches of snow in one month. Thank you.